Welcome to lecture three. So the first actual lecture video in this semester, so for Math 115 stats, we're looking at section 1.3, simple random sampling. It's actually a rather short section, but as always, feel free to read through the section by yourself as well. So obtaining a simple random sample. For the definition, random sampling is a process of using chance. to select individuals from a population to be included in the sample. And as usual, I include the page number where to find this piece of information. Let's look at the next definition. A sample of size n, okay, so notice this is where you need to be careful, for math especially, using a lowercase n or a capital N, you cannot um, switch between them. They're not interchangeable, especially in statistics. Because for this, a sample of size n from a population of size capital N. Okay, so notice here, lowercase n is talking about a sample, whereas capital N is talking about a population. So always please be careful when using variables. If it is given as a lowercase, keep it as a lowercase. If, if it is given as a capital letter, please use a capital letter. That is something I will be watching for um, during exams and on your notes for your exams. All right, so let me read this definition again. A sample of size n from a population of size n is obtained through simple random sampling if every possible sample of size n has an equally likely chance of occurring. So that's a big point. Nope. Okay. They need to have an equally likely chance of occurring. The sample is then called a simple random sample. Ooh, almost ran out of space there. All right. So note, one thing to note here. In a sample without replacement, what I mean here. Well, for example, if you had, let's say, a jar of candies, right? And every time you took out a candy, you ate it. That would mean there would be one less candy every time you ate one, and you took it out, sorry, and you ate it. That's talking about without replacement. Another option is if you replaced it every time, you just checked what kind of candy, candy that you took out. So instead of eating it, maybe you took out a candy, you looked and said, oh, it's a Tootsie Roll, and you put it back in. Then you reached around, shuffled around, pulled out another candy, and you said, oh, it's a lollipop, okay? So there's replacement versus without replacement. Let me go ahead and read this again. In a sample without replacement, that means you're taking them out and your sample size is slowly dwindling, an individual who's selected is removed from the population and cannot be chosen again. In a sample with replacement, a selected individual is placed back into the population to be chosen a second time, possibly. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the one example for this section. This is illustrating simple random sampling. And once again, for simple random sampling, one of the main things we want to look at is the fact that they have an equally likely chance of occurring. Keep that in mind. All right, so Sophia has three tickets to a concert. Three of her friends, Kelly, Michael, and Annie, all have expressed an interest in going to the concert. Sophia decides to randomly select two of her three friends to attend the concert, and that would be with her. Okay, so indicate what the sample size n is and what the population size n is. Once again, got to be careful with our capital and lowercase. So sample size, let's see. Well, what would the sample be? And what's the population? So she has Kelly, Michael, and Annie. All right. So this is what she starts with, and then she's going to pick from them two people. All right, so the population is three, and the sample is going to be two. All right, so sample size n is two, and the population, capital N, is three. Next is to list all of the possible sample combinations. All right, what I'm going to do is stick with just K, M, and A instead of writing out their full names. 
So what is one of the first possibilities? Well, she could choose Kelly and Michael. Okay. And then we could have Kelly and Annie. All right, so that's it with Kelly. Next, we can look at Michael and Kelly. Oh, but Michael and Kelly, we already did that one. All right, so since we already did that one, we're going to go ahead and take that one out. We've already done that option. Okay, so let's see. After that, Michael and Kelly has already happened. How about Michael and Annie? That one hasn't happened yet. All right, good. So we worked with Michael. Let's take a look at Annie. So we could have Annie and Kelly, but we already have that option right here, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of the Annie and Kelly. And then the next one we would have would be Annie and Michael. But once again, we already had that option, so we're going to go ahead and take that one out. So all we have are three possible combinations. Okay, so there are three possible combinations. I'll go ahead and box that answer. And I'll also go ahead and box these up here. Lastly, we're going to comment on the likelihood of the sample containing Kelly and Annie. So the likelihood, or the probability, of the sample containing Kelly and Annie, well, that probability is just going to be, well, let's see, there's only one time it contains Kelly and Annie. So it's just one out of three is the probability, or the likelihood. And in fact, the probability of obtaining any of these sample sizes have a 1 in 3 chance of happening. Each of them would only occur 1 out of 3 times. So 1 out of 3... Let me write that as a better complete sentence. So likelihood of the sample containing Kelly and Annie, the likelihood of the sample containing Kelly, it should be a capital K. Kelly and Annie is one out of three. And notice the likelihood of getting each of our any of our samples was the same. It was one out of three for all of the options, which fits the definition we had with simple random sampling. Okay, so on to example two. The department head for the College of Business wants to conduct a survey on the student body's opinion regarding the courses offered. She has the names and phone numbers of 465 students. Which of the following procedures could you follow to pick a simple random sample of four students? Okay, so we want to make sure that the options we're looking at are random. And one of the main things we mentioned before is that each person in the or each um, member in the sample needs to have the same exact, um, what would they call that, probability or likelihood of being picked. So that's one of the main things. They all need the same likelihood. Okay, so let's read the first one. Number the names from 1 to 465 and use a random number table to produce four different three-digit numbers corresponding to the name selected. Well, when we do that, we're just using a random number table, so everything is random, and each person, their name is represented once, which means they have the same likelihood. Okay, so this is a procedure we could follow. Next one. List the names in alphabetical order and take the first four names on the list. Well, this one, the students don't have the same likelihood. It's going to be the first four. All the rest of them are not going to get picked. Okay, so that is not going to be one. Third one, send out an email and ask the students to come to a meeting and pick four from those who come to the meeting. Now this sounds like it might be good, but the hard thing here is that not all the students might show up, so they may not all have the likelihood of coming and to the meeting and actually being picked from the meeting. So this one does not work. Last one, list each name on a separate piece of paper, place them all in a hat, and pick four. Well, let's see, each name is going to be represented once in the hat, so everyone's equally likely of being picked. All right, that one works too. So we have two options that work and two that don't. We're going to go ahead and use the first method for finding a simple random sample. 
So part B, using the random number table right here, obtain a random sample of four by starting at the first column of the first row. And remember, we are looking for three digit numbers. Let's keep that in mind. All right, so we're starting at the first column of the first row. First column, first row. So we're starting at eight. But remember, we're looking at three digit numbers. So the first number we would look at is 863. But there's not going to be a student number at 863 because we only have 465 students. So that's the cap out number that we could have. Let me write that down, 465. So 863 is not going to be one of our numbers. Let's look at the next one. 440. Well, that number is smaller than 465, so that'll be our first number. So whoever has that number listed next to their name would be one of the students picked. So let's look at the next one. The next one is 704. That's too big. We can't take that one. Next number, 986. Ooh, also too big. Can't take that one. Next number, 084. Huh, that's actually 84. And we can take 84. Okay, so far we have two students randomly picked. We need two more. Let's keep going. 389. That is smaller than 465, so we can go ahead and include that student's random number in. Sorry, 389. And the next one, 431. Ah, good. That one's also smaller than 465. And we have found the random numbers for our students to be picked. Okay, go ahead, pause the video, and try part C by yourself, and then check back in with me. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and tried it by yourself. Let's see, this is using the random number table again. Obtain a random sample of four by starting at the sixth column of the second row. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Second row, one, two. All right, so we're gonna start at two. So the first number we have is 201, which is smaller than 465, so we'll go ahead and take that. Two, ooh, wrong pen, 201. Next one, 079, that one is also small enough, 79. And then the next one, 994, it's 944, sorry, that's too big, can't use that. Let's look at the next one. Six, four, six, four. Oh, just made it. Awesome. Four, six, four. And lastly, zero, zero, six, which is just the number six. All right, so there we go. We have the next random sample. Okay, so that is it. Make sure to upload this as a single PDF document to your Dropbox in La Lima. Please make sure it is in PDF form as a single PDF document and that it is readable. Make sure to check it before you upload it. And make sure to get that turned in by Friday. Please email me if you have any questions.